Welcome back to Golf Training Hacks. Slices, hooks, topping the ball, chunking. We've all done it, we hate it, how do we get rid of it? Well, to a large extent, fixing those golf swing errors has to do with controlling the club head. You really have to control the club head at impact. And that means you need to create and maintain lag into impact. So at impact, we need to have some lag. And that's because of the physics of lag. It's because of the physics of force and mass. When the force, which is your hands, is leading the center of mass, which is basically around here in your shaft, when that happens, you're going to be able to control your club head better. And we need to keep that lag and release it through impact, about 45 degrees ahead of impact. That's the physics of lag. It's force and mass. So through your downswing, your hands, the force, should be pulling the mass, which is about here, the center of mass in your uh, club, into and through impact and then release completely out in front of impact. If it's not, then you're gonna lose stability in the club head. And here's a good example. Let's take a child's wagon. We have a, a handle, a hinge, and the wagon's out in front. If I'm pushing the wagon, it's hard to control. If I'm running with it, it's really hard to control. It's probably going to turn back on me. If I'm pulling the wagon, the force is ahead of the mass, then I can run as fast as I want, and that force is just going to pull that mass right along, and the mass is going to follow with no problem. Well, that's your golf swing. And there's a lot of speed in the golf swing, so it makes this very important. If you're flipping and casting, that means the mass is running ahead of the force, and you're going to be losing a lot of control at the point of impact. So you need to create and maintain lag at the right points in your downswing. It has to be created in your downswing and it has to be maintained into impact. Now of course, depending on your club, you know, you may have more or less uh, shaft lean, but your hands will be pulling the shaft through impact. Now, if you have a driver, well, there'll be a little bit less of a shaft lean. If you have a, a nine iron, there'll be more, just because of where the ball is positioned in your, in your uh, stance and the, the size of the club. But even with a driver, the hands are pulling the shaft into impact. To do that, you need strong and mobile hips, because if you can't create rotational force in your hips, you can't create the right amount of lag, you can't sequence the leg correctly, and you're never going to be able to control the club head because you're going to end up flipping and casting, right? If you can't drive your hips through impact, then you're going to need to do something else to move the club. And that's going to be pushing it, flipping it, and casting it into impact, and you're going to lose control of the club head. So in this video, we're going to work on hip function and improving your hip strength and hip mobility. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to work on getting some hip internal rotation. Now, you need hip internal rotation throughout the golf swing. So, hip internal rotation is this, and that's what you need for your takeaway. So, an easy way to start is do some nice, easy rocking going from left to right. <clears throat> so, you get onto the all four position, you rock back, and then rock into the right side. So, I'm rocking into this side. Look down, you look up, and then you rock into that side. Now, if you can't go all the way back, go as far as you can. If that's all you can go, that's fine. You could go from the right side to the left side. Rock down, rock to the right, or you could just Go from one side to the other. It's 
nice easy way to begin to get some movement in your hip capsule. This ground based movement is an advancement on a single leg rock. So here's a single leg rock. You put this foot down, you're going to drop back and come up. So that's a basic single leg rock. Now what we're going to do is add a rotation into this. So we're going to externally rotate our hips on the front movement and then do a, uh, a single leg rock on the back movement, but we're going to leave our front foot forward so that we get a stretch on the hamstrings. So let me show you how that's done. Okay, so you're going to start in this position. You're going to rock back. Now I'm keeping this foot on the floor. So now I'm stretching this hamstring, rocking back. When I come forward, I'm going to push this knee out. So I'm externally rotating this hip and I'm rocking back on this hip. Now to advance that, you can use an isometric hold at the top of this movement. So we'll start with the rock. I'm going to rock back. I'm going to rock out and then I'm going to brace myself, look away, push this arm into this knee, hold my breath and do an isometric push. So I take a deep breath in. I'm going to push and hold. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. Release and rock back. Come forward. Deep breath in, hold, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, release, and back. So that's a great way to do a couple of things at once. We're getting some external uh, rotation on the front side in that top movement. We're rocking back into the hip on the back movement and we're getting some hamstring stretch as we rock back. So this is a shout out to Tim Anderson and his original strength and Kelly Sturette in the ready state because I kind of combined two of their uh, movement techniques into one. We follow them all the time. They don't know us, but we should know them. If you want to really look into uh, these ground-based movements, check out Tim Anderson. And if you want to learn a whole bunch about mobility, check out the Ready State. This is a level one exercise in our hip extension program. Now, in the golf swing, you need to be able to powerfully extend your hips one at a time. This exercise is going to help you do that, and we're going to use pulley rows to do that. So let me show you how. To start this exercise, you're going to hip hinge back and lean forward. Then row the pulleys into your hips and extend. Now you can stay on the same side and do this. Or you can alternate. So I'm sure you've all seen hip bridges or done hip bridges, but we're going to do a hip bridge using a band and doing a single leg hip bridge to get some more strength into our hip complex. So I'm sure you guys know about that's a hip bridge, but we're going to do it with a single leg. So this is a single leg hip bridge. You can hold it isometrically or you can do it with motion, but I'm going to use a band. So I could put some force on it. Now we can put force on this several ways. You can put force on it by pushing out and relaxing and taking it back. You can relax it by going out and then having yourself resist that force coming back. So I'm pushing this way. I'm pushing out as I'm pulling back. That's an eccentric contraction or you can have constant force on it by holding it, pushing out, and then 
trying to resist that force, coming back. So there's three ways. So let's do, let's try that. So you go into your hip bridge, come up. I'm going to push out, release, and come back. Release and come back. And you don't have to stay in the hip bridge. You can push, come back, release, come back up, push, release, and come back down. Okay, that's one way. The second way is the eccentric contraction where we're gonna release going out and then I'm resisting coming back. Release going out and resisting coming back. That's number two. And again, you could put your hips down and up. And the third way is to keep constant pressure on it. And we call these transitionals because you're transitioning from a concentric to an eccentric contraction. So I'll hip ridge up. And now I'm going to put constant force on this. So that's a way to put some strength into your hip complex, and in particular, your glute max. So if you found this helpful, we'd love you to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up, because we want to get our message out to as many people as possible about improving movement quality. So tell all your golfer friends, and you know what? It's not just really for golfers. A lot of people can benefit from improving their movement quality. So thanks for watching.